Now before we get into the actual sandwich that I ate about every other day for almost two years, we need to talk about the condiment that made that sandwich special. We gotta talk about cilantro sauce. And it really just starts with cleaning a bunch of cilantro. Just found a twig in the cilantro. So cleaning it is mightily important. First thing, we're just gonna cut off the root ends. We're even gonna keep a lot of the stem onto the cilantro. There's a lot of flavor there. So I got a salad spinner, the base of a salad spinner. I fill up with water and I'm just gonna soak to get all that dirt off. I've got three bunches of cilantro. I've already cleaned two. Get it tossed up. We just wanna soak and rinse the cilantro really well. As you're gonna see, the water is just really dirty. So we wanna kind of do this a couple of times until the water is nice and clear. And then we just wanna give the cilantro a really good dry in the salad spinner. Now I got three bunches of cilantro here. Next I'm gonna wash two bunches of scallions. And then just take off their root end. And then just give it a rough chop. And I got two bunches of chives. Again, into, into little pieces, just so it's easier to blend. So we got lots of green going. Then we got two jalapenos. If you want it spicy, add a lot of the ribs and the seeds. If you want it mild, just use the flesh. A little bit of the flesh and the seeds. Uh, I don't want to go too crazy, so I'll just cut around the real core at the top. More green stuff. We just keep adding the green stuff. That's what we want. It's a cilantro-y, limey, spicy, creamy sauce. When you go shop for limes, make sure they're soft and juicy and not hard as a rock. Otherwise, you're not going to get a lot of yield out of each lime. Three limes gets about a half a cup. And that's if they're juicy. I'm gonna go with about three quarters of a cup to one cup of lime juice. Now I have this blade in the freezer. I just like to keep it nice and cold because the thing can overheat and I don't want heat really getting into my sauce. Along with my greens and my lime juice, I'm gonna add avocado, mayo, agave, some avocado oil, and some salt. First goes in the lime juice. I'm gonna recommend you add about half at a time rather than all of it at once so you can adjust the acidity. I like it really acidic, others might not. Then we're gonna start to work in the greens. I should plug it in first, no? First, I wanna just get all of the green veg pureed and broken down. It seems like a lot in volume, but once pureed, it'll break down into a much smaller amount. Then goes the rest. All right, so that base flavor's there. I'm gonna add a little bit of oil, maybe add a half a cup to a cup. A little bit of agave, balance out that lime. Go with a half cup of mayo, some salt. And we didn't add avocado to our recipe. We stopped it here, but I like to add avocado. Just a little bit more green in there, a little bit more flavor, a little bit more creaminess. Now the sauce should be nice and balanced. It should be heavy on the cilantro. It should have nice lime flavor, not too overpowering. It should be spicy and it should be creamy. If anything's out of whack, it's on you to adjust it. Just the salt. I think I can adjust a little bit of sweetness. Now you don't want it overpoweringly limey, which is what I'm getting a little bit now. I'm gonna add a little bit of sweet. Adding a little bit more of that agave, mellowed out that intense acidity. So I might just adjust the written recipe here down in the description, so make sure you go check that out when the recipe's done. We got tons of green in there and there's lots of flavor. It's good, we're gonna let it marry. Let's hang out. Now, to understand what we're gonna do with this sauce, we've gotta go back 10 years ago when I was still running my grilled cheese truck. Pretty good. This is the Fort Green sandwich. Oh my God, unbelievable. And I basically ate it every other day for two years straight. I more or less worked on the truck every day. So I'd usually make a variation of either the short rib grilled cheese, which we've covered on the show, or a variation of the Fort Green. It was a sandwich made of fontanella cheese, avocado, bacon, and this cilantro sauce. And the thing about it is I can honestly say I never got sick of it. But there was something special about Fort Green, not just the sandwich, but the neighborhood that we named it after. Fort Green, Brooklyn was the neighborhood in which we operated our food truck in. The neighborhood revolved around and our cart was parked outside of Fort Green Park, a really gorgeous park designed by the same people who designed Central Park and Prospect Park. 
About a block away from the park is the neighborhood center. It's the kind of place where you have lots of people and characters always roaming around, hanging around the hood. It's the kind of Brooklyn neighborhood that you imagine. The kind of neighborhood that still holds block parties. Beautiful brownstone streets lined with beautiful big trees. Usually in the morning I'd walk to this grocery store to stock up on fresh avocados for the day to make the fort green, as well as stocking up on hot sauces to refill our hot sauce bar. They still have the hot sauce I used to put on the sandwich. On the walk back I'd pass Spike Lee's studio and production company 40 Acres and a Mule. Occasionally they'd order some sandwiches from the office, which was always really cool. I'd walk it all back to the cart where I'd set up for the day and serve right in this very spot. You see this whole street is on an incline, but this little patch right here is a flat, even surface of stone. The flatness of these stones was essential in our day to day. Without it, we would have had a huge problem with the cart not being level. Nobody will ever appreciate or cherish random flat stones in the ground the way that I cherished these stones. And then this would be my view all day long. Stare out at DeKalb Avenue, greeting the neighborhood goers as they walk around to and from work. I loved this neighborhood. It's a classic New York City neighborhood, a real New York City neighborhood, one that still has a tight neighborhood feel, but one that has a special character, a uniqueness to it. When I first tasted the Fort Greene sandwich that my brother created, I knew it was a hit and it would be the perfect sandwich to make the neighborhood proud. Oh my God, unbelievable. Perfect. This is a perfect grilled cheese. Totally unreal. What is this called? Oh, food freaks. Yeah. Bacon and avocado sandwiches, it's a classic combination. And if you add this sauce to it, it takes a classic combination and adds that little extra bit of personality that you didn't really know you needed. So, enough of that story. I had to get it out there. It's a big part of my past. Let's move on to the sandwich. Now I'm just gonna get some bacon strips on a sheet tray and just get them into the oven and get them cooked. We're gonna throw them into a cold oven and then we're gonna turn the heat on to 375 and cook them for about 30 minutes or so until they're just nice, crispy, and beautiful. So the cheese that we used was called Fontanella. It's not to be confused with Fontina. That's an Italian cheese. This is actually a North American cheese despite what the name might sound like. It's sweet, it's creamy, it's meltable. It's a really nice flavor that goes with all of the other ingredients. Although you can use Fontina, that's obviously a great melting cheese. So what we wanna do, get it out of its packaging. And then I wanna use the small grater. Get it as small as possible. I'm just gonna grate it up. Very similar to cheddar, but has more flavor. Sort of has a funky smell, but doesn't have a funky taste. It's nice and sweet. It's a great cheese. You should really give it a shot and try to look out for it. We got our cheese ready. At Whole Foods, I was pleased to find that they sell Orr Washer's bread. Orr Washer's was the bakery on the Upper East Side, the actual place we got our bread from. So if you're local in New York, you might be able to actually find the exact bread we used in this sandwich. Otherwise, a good sourdough bread, a boule, a nice cut loaved boule of sourdough is gonna be perfect for this. Now, if you remember my smoked barbecued pork butt video that I just released, I had a bunch of pork fat that I used when I wrapped the butt. This is how I get it. Every time I cook bacon, I save the fat and store it for later use. We're just gonna flip and rotate the bacon every so often until we get it nice and crispy and brown. Now you always gotta remember with bacon, it's gonna continue to cook when you get it out. And it's gonna harden too, so you wanna make sure you account for that. Now when we started the truck, we used to bake the bacon in into strips. We did that so it was easy for us to portion and figure out how much we were using in each sandwich. But we realized there was too much pull, even if we broke a piece up into thirds. So what we ended up doing is cutting them into pieces and then cooking them, which I sort of forgot because we made a kind of switch at some point. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is chop this up into more bite-sized pieces. That's sort of what you're looking for. They call it a lardon. This is actually a boar's head thick cut bacon. The exact bacon we used on the cart, they actually make a really good bacon. Just get the nice thick center cut stuff. So right here I got my station. I've got an avocado which we're gonna cut as needed. Two slices of the ore washer sourdough bread. Our bacon, our cheese that's grated, and our cilantro sauce. 
And now what I would do is measure out about a half a cup of cheese. You could add more, but for the sake of authenticity, I'm gonna keep it like we did on the cart. You know, we had profit margins to pay attention to. I would just divide it up between the two slices of bread and then spread it out evenly. And then the bacon would go on. And I'm gonna add probably more than I would have added on the cart, but I just want one nice thin layer across one side of the bread. Not too, too much. You wanna imagine getting a few pieces of bacon in each bite. Then I take my avocado. We want a quarter of an avocado. I'd cut it straight in my hand for the sake of speed. Never cut myself, was really safe about it, but to be safe, you could do it in a towel. And we're just gonna cut thin slices, and scoop that out, and then we're gonna place that in then one thin layer on top of the bacon. And then we're gonna go in with the cilantro sauce and we wanna be pretty liberal with it. We don't want too much coming out the sides, but we really want that flavor to permeate the ingredients inside the sandwich. And then the hardest part about it all is closing it. And you've gotta do it quickly and with intention and confidence, and you shouldn't have a lot of that cheese run out. So now we just cook it like we cook all our grilled cheeses. We've had a cast iron pan being preheated on low heat for a while, so it's like sufficiently heated all the way through, and now I could jack it up and cook the sandwich. So we got a really well preheated pan, we wanted it at around medium heat, and we added our sandwiches dry, meaning no fat in the beginning of the cooking process. We wanted to toast the outsides of the bread. Just dries it out a little bit more and creates a crispier end product and a sturdier, less greasy one. You're really gonna wanna pay attention to heat here and manage it properly. Too hot and you're gonna burn everything too quickly too slow and it's gonna just take forever. And now you can see on the sheet tray, you've got some excess cheese. You could use that on the pan to create some nice crust or you can use it in another sandwich. And I just have a little bit of mayo and, and a utensil to spread that on the bread. We used mayo, we didn't use butter. Had a much higher smoking point. You're not gonna taste it, don't worry about it. Once one side was lightly toasted, we'd give it a flip and spread the thinnest coating of mayo on top of that side of the bread. Not a lot of mayo, the thinnest coating from edge to edge is gonna be enough. I kinda use the edge of the utensil, so I'm kind of spreading it evenly while scraping off any excess. And you'll notice I kind of readjust the sandwich to its flat side before flipping. That just ensures a less messy flip. And then we're gonna add mayo to the other side of the bread. Once we've made it the other side, the bottom side should be nicely golden brown. So we're gonna give it a flip around the other side of the bread. And once both sides of the bread are beautifully golden brown, then it's a game of playing hot potato. And we're just gonna lower the heat and keep it flipping every 30 seconds or so, so you don't accumulate too much more color on the bread, but you give the cheese time to melt. And keep it moving until the cheese is fully melted inside. And once the cheese is fully melted, the sandwich is done. Then of course you have your hot sauce bar. This is the exact hot sauce I preferred on this sandwich. So delicious. And just like that, the memories come flooding right back in. It's incredible how flavor can trigger memories. Anyway, I'm gonna enjoy and savor this moment. If you wanna get the recipe, as always, links down in the description. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Until then, take care of yourself and go feed yourself. For more videos on my old grilled cheese truck and my grilled cheese recipes, there are a few links on the screen right now I think you might like to check out.